Hello and welcome to your weekly dispatch where we'll give you a rundown of news stories of national, regional and international significance. Here's what stood out for us this week. After violent sectarian clashes in Kuram district, all parties have agreed to a ceasefire and investigations are to follow. Election Commission of Pakistan has finally announced the dates for general elections in 2024. Civil society and human rights activists petitioned the Supreme Court of Pakistan against the expulsion of undocumented Afghans from the country in dire circumstances. And for our feature story, diplomatic pushback on Gaza assault takes root as suspension of diplomatic ties with Israel initiated in Latin America. The Kurum tribal district has declared a ceasefire and ended hostilities with no bullets fired on Wednesday, as per news reports. The government acknowledged the loss of 25 lives since the clashes began on October 24th. A controversial video stoking sectarian resentments was initially claimed to have caused the eruption of violence, but further investigation revealed that the root issue was a land dispute between two groups in the district. A special land commission has been constituted to resolve the dispute. The government is working to restore peace in the area and reopen closed droughts to ensure daily use commodities and medicines are available. Both groups have agreed to vacate bunkers and local elders, government representatives and law enforcement officials have played a crucial role in improving the situation. The government is also aiming to reopen all closed routes in a day or two. The issue of sectarian tensions remains precarious in the region and without addressing these underlying issues, the region remains vulnerable to exploitation of sectarian sentiments in personal and political disputes. Chief Justice of Pakistan, Qazi Faiz Isa, has directed the Election Commission of Pakistan to consult with the President on the poll dates for the general elections. The move came after the Election Commission informed the Supreme Court that the general elections would be held on February 11th. The top judge also instructed the ECP to appear before the Apex Court on Friday after consultation with the President and all relevant signed documents. The final date for the election will be announced by the ECP and pleas for an extension will not be heard after this at the Supreme Court. The court has also issued notices to the Election Commission and federal government for their input on polls within 90 days. The final list of constituencies will be published on December 5th. And now more news from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court of Pakistan has been asked to declare the Pakistani government's mass deportation of Afghans as illegal, unconstitutional and against fundamental rights. A joint petition filed by various Pakistani politicians, including advocate Omar Izaz Gilani, argues that the government's policy has failed to distinguish between birthright citizens and undocumented immigrants, violating the ruling of Pakistan's Superior Court in the Hafiz Hamdullah Sabur case. The petition also calls for the federal government to allow UNHCR and its partner organizations to register and process asylum-seeking applications for foreigners currently residing in Pakistan. The court should also order the federal government to coordinate with law enforcement agencies to secure the fundamental rights of all persons currently residing in Pakistan. The petition also argues that the policy of deporting refugees violates the Article 2A of the Constitution and fails to consider the fact that many deported individuals may be doubly marginalized due to factors like ethnicity, religion and gender. The petitioner disagrees with the government's view that all foreigners living in Pakistan without a valid visa are liable for deportation, arguing that many of these refugees were actually born in Pakistan and have a solid claim to birthright citizenship. And now for our feature story. In an interesting turn of events, the South American nation of Bolivia has officially cut off all diplomatic ties with Israel. The move comes over committing of crimes against humanity in view of the indiscriminate bombing of the Gaza Strip. Statements of condemnation have been mounting from Muslim countries and regional powers. But this move is the strongest yet and the first instance of comprehensive cutoff of diplomatic ties. In what seems like a domino effect, Chile and Colombia soon after recalled their respective envoys to Israel. Jordan, which has traditionally shared cordial relations with Israel, also followed suit, recalling their own envoy. Israeli airstrikes also targeted the Jabalia refugee camp within 24 hours, twice, spurring further condemnation from international organizations. Over 190 people were confirmed killed and a further 120 remain missing or unaccounted for. 
And in Europe, Spain has remained vocally critical of Israeli war tactics and continues to mount pressure on other members to sever diplomatic and trade ties with Israel. Meanwhile, in other significant developments, the Yemeni army declared its full support for the Palestinian cause and announced its joining the conflict, with barrages of missiles launched at Israel on Tuesday. This is perhaps one of the most significant developments in the operational theatre, as a sense of unified response seems to be emerging from non-state actors like Hezbollah and the Houthi forces, in support of the Palestinian resistance. The official declaration of war also puts a question mark on potential Saudi involvement in the conflict. Saudi Arabia leads a coalition of Muslim countries against terrorism and is engaged in battle against the Houthis in Yemen. Additionally, the Council of Islamic Religious Leaders has issued a fatwa mandating Muslim nations to intervene and stop the ongoing bloodshed in Gaza. And unless the onslaught in Gaza ceases, the situation has all the markings of a spillover into a larger conflict, bringing military powers like Russia, Iran, the UK and the USA into direct or indirect hostilities. I am Hadra Asaf Khan and this was your Weekly Dispatch.